Hello there. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use XLOM to create three different forecast models, one using exponential smoothing with two different constants, and then three-year moving average, and then trend projection. I'll also show you how to do the trend projection using your calculator manually. This question relates to problem 4.13 in your text. It has to do for heart transplant surgery at a hospital. We're presented with five years of historical data on heart transplants, and the Director of Medical Services has predicted six years ago that the demand in year one would be 41 surgeries. So that's the initial forecast to kick it off. I've created a summary table of the actual data, and then we'll populate it with the forecast results from our models. And we'll also conduct an error summary using MAD, MSE, and MAPE. So, assuming you have XLOM installed and that you've launched it correctly from the alias and enabled the macros, click on the XLOM menu in the ribbon, select chapter, exponential smoothing. This is 4.13 expo. We're given five years of historical data and we'll crank out the model. We'll blow it up. We'll go back. We'll copy our five years of actual demand, paste the values, and we will set an alpha value of 0.6. And also recall that the medical director predicted that the demand in year one would be 41 surgeries. So we must make sure that we set the initial forecast to be 41. And our next period forecast for year six is 56.2 or uh, basically 57 heart transplants. We'll take that and we'll put it in our table. We'll also go and grab our forecast data and populate our summary table with it. And we'll also pull our uh, MAD, MSE, and MAPE values. We'll copy those and we will paste special. And then look at the bottom where you see a paste special with the three dots. Select transpose and values. And there they are. Now we'll use the smoothing constant of 0.9. Rather than create a new model, we'll just go change the one we have to 0 0.9. 57.75 is the next period forecast. We'll just go and paste that in. And we'll also grab the forecast values and put it in our summary table. And finally, we'll grab our MAD, MSE, and MAPE. And there we have it. Next, we'll move on to requirement B, where we're asked to use a three-year moving average to forecast the demand in years four, five, and six. Go to Excel OM chapter, and we will use moving average. We're still given five years of data, and we will use a three-year moving average. So we'll average three periods. We'll click OK to run our model, and we will go to our Expo model or the original data and just copy the demand. We have three periods, and you can see years four, five, and six. Year six have a forecast of 55.33, so we'll take that, we'll copy it, and we'll grab the forecast values, paste those as well. We can't forecast the first three years of, da of data because this is a three-year moving average. It requires at least three years of data to produce year four. And then our final requirement is to use trend projection. So once again, we will this time choose trend projection. We'll call this trend five years worth of data. Run the model, go to any previous model, copy and paste the results. And you can see that the next period, year six, is projecting 61.8 heart transplants. So we'll just copy that one in there. And we'll also Grab the forecast values for the first five years. Oh, and I forgot to include my error data from the weighted moving average, so we'll just take those and copy them in. And finally, for the trend projection. So there we have it. The forecasts for period six under each model range from 55 or 56 heart transplants all the way up to 62, because you can't have a partial heart transplant. If you look at the mean absolute deviation, the trend projection actually produces the lowest error. So we'll highlight that as the most desirable. It also produces the lowest mean squared error and the lowest mean absolute percentage. So what we can deduce from these four comparative models is that the trend projection for heart is the, more, is the most appropriate model from the ones that we've generated to predict the number of heart transplants for the next year. So now what we'll do is show you how to use your calculator to do the trend projection model manually. Since we only have five periods worth of data, it's actually really easy to do. So what your calculator does is it basically treats a trend projection the same as it does a linear regression model, where the year is the x variable 
and the heart transplants is the y variable. So what we're going to do is, I'll bring up a version of your calculator, a BA2+, plus, and what we want to do is use the data and stat function in your calculator, so you can see the second function data, which is the second function seven button, and the second function eight is the stat. So we'll go into, into data mode, so second function data, and you wanna make sure that you clear everything out. So if you uh, second function clear work, it should zero out all the cells. And then what you have is your calculator is asking for you to input the first uh, data point, which is X, and X01 is just simply the first value of X. With trend projection, we treat each period as a sequential value for X. So we'll put in one and then press enter for X01, and then we'll go down, and in year one we have 45 transplants. So 45, enter, and then we'll go down. For uh, year two, we'll go two, enter, and 50 transplants. X3 is three, enter, hit the down arrow, and that's 52 transplants. X4, enter, and that's 56 transplants. Uh, year five, enter, has 58 transplants. And you see it's asking for X06. There is no X06, so we're going to project that year. So it should be zero. If you scroll down, it's also going to ask for Y06. But then if you hit the down arrow again, it actually goes to the top of the list so that you can confirm the values in your calculator. So we have X1 and 45. X2 is 2, Y250, 352, 4, 56, 5, 58. And so we know our values work. Then what we want to do is hit second function stat and scroll down until we see A and B because what we want to do is construct the equation. So scrolling down, we see that we have A is 42.6 and B is 3.2 and that's the equation of the line. So what happens is here our equation is going to be Y equals 42.6 plus 3.2X and if we want to project the forecast for period six, that's going to be 42.6 plus 3.2, and we'll put six in for the value of X, and that gives us 61.8, which is the same value that we had using uh, Excel OM model. Sometimes it's uh, very quick to do with your calculator. Even though we did these with Excel OM, you should spot check your calculations manually in case you could see a question on an exam where you have to calculate the mean absolute deviation or the mean absolute percentage error and to confirm that you understand how all the forecasts are calculated. And that's it. We hope you found this video useful.